Hello and welcome back to the Cybersecurity Crash Course for Small and Mid-Sized Organizations. In this lesson, we're going to talk about secure remote access. How do you allow your employees to securely connect back to your network when they are remotely? Or how do you allow your vendors to connect to your network if they need to do work remotely? This is lesson 12 of our 12-part Cybersecurity Crash Course. If you have not watched all of the previous lessons, be sure you go and check them out. We have lots of information there that's going to be really, really useful for you to building out a cybersecurity program, improving the security at your small and mid-sized organization. So far within the crash course, we've already talked about lots of tools. We've done a lot of demos that you're really going to want to go back and take a look at. And finally, real quick, be sure that you check out the companion guide to the course. There's lots of links, tools, a lot of extra material that you're really going to want to get and check out there as well. So when we're talking about remote access being done securely, do your employees and vendors really need to connect to your network remotely? And if you find yourself in the case where you have employees who are working remote, which we've seen with the pandemic, right? We've seen a lot of shift to working from home. We see a lot of vendors not traveling to sites anymore. They want to do work remotely. And this is a security risk being introduced that we have to figure out how do we mitigate? How do we deal with this risk? So if you are going to make the move to allow remote work for it to be secure, there's a couple things that you have to keep in mind. For, and these foundational principles should guide all of your decisions about remote work. And remote work can be done securely. Just because it's remote doesn't mean it is insecure inherently. There are ways to do this right. And we've seen organizations across the country, across the government, adapting to this change and implementing remote work that is secure. And as you go through this process, keep in mind, security should always be front and center of mind. Any decision you make, keep security first. Keep that as the forefront of your thoughts as you choose tools, solutions, etc. Convenience, security and convenience are inversely related. The more convenient something is, the less secure it is most of the time. The more inconvenient it is, a lot of times, the more secure it is. So keep that in mind. Next, force your employees and your vendors to follow strong security standards. And this is gonna start with policies. Outlining policies and procedures, what your employees, what remote workers are supposed to do, so they know exactly how to follow these policies and introduce as little risk to your organization as possible. And finally, on the organization's part, you have to give your vendors and your employees the tools that they need to make security a part of routine work. We want security to be an everyday thing so that when the shift to remote work happens or any kind of shift happens, it's not out of the ordinary, your employees are already used to it. So how can you protect the devices on your network when you are setting up secure remote access? First of all, be sure that you change all of the default usernames and passwords on your routers on your firewalls and on your edge devices. Many of these devices come with remote access from the web. That is, you can access the admin portal of these devices, especially if you're using a default one that came from your ISP or internet provider. These devices can be accessed remotely and that is a security risk, especially if they are still using the default credentials that come with them or if they have hard-coded credentials in them. So that's gonna be something you're going to want to look up on your individual router, your individual firewall to see if it has those default credentials that need to be changed, if it has hard-coded credentials that you should be aware of, and you maybe want to switch brands or mitigate that risk somehow. Next, be sure that you keep your routers, your edge devices, your firewalls, keep the operating systems and the firmware on those devices up to date. You should go and check them periodically, once a month, a couple times a quarter, Check those devices, see if there are updates available. Make sure that your firmware stays up to date. This is a constant threat vector that we see in cybersecurity. We've seen even recently some well-known brands had some pretty serious security flaws in that allowed attackers to bypass those devices and get into organizations' networks. So that's going to be something you want to keep up with. When you have workers who work remotely, they are likely taking their devices out of the office unless you're using something like BYOD, bring your own device. 
and if they are taking company laptops, desktops out of your organization to be able to work remotely, implementing full disk encryption on any devices that contain sensitive information or connect to sensitive parts of your network, that's going to be something you're going to want to think about. The simple reason for that is if those devices are stolen, any individual can gain access to that device. Remember, we showed you in a previous lesson how simple it is to hack a device if you have physical access to it. Um, go back and watch the video on inventory management if you didn't see that demo. It's pretty interesting. But an attacker who has physical access to your devices can get on those devices and then could potentially connect to your network. So encrypting those devices can stop a lot of attacks where a bad actor could gain access to that device and get um, into the systems. For your mobile devices, laptops, phones, etc., that your company manages, it's not a bad idea to set policies that get pushed to those devices that cause them to not auto connect to public Wi Fi or not auto connect to any network, any Wi Fi network, because here's why you might hide your Wi Fi name to secure it, but what you don't realize is all your devices. In the background, when they're not connected to Wi-Fi, they're constantly sending out these little pings, um, so to speak, and they're saying, hey, home Wi-Fi, are you available? No answer. Hey, work Wi-Fi, are you available? And in these little broadcasts, it's actually broadcast the name of your Wi-Fi. So you're sort of defeating the purpose of hiding your Wi-Fi if you have these devices broadcasting these names out. And an attacker who knows what they're doing can snoop on that traffic and pick those names up. Uh, we do this all the time on penetration tests. So having your devices not automatically connect to public Wi-Fi or any Wi-Fi is another great security control to implement. And finally, all of your mobile devices need to be regularly updated and patched. This includes mobile devices, laptops, mobile, tablets, op uh, antivirus needs to be updated and patched. Keep your operating systems across the board patched and up to date, your routers, firewalls, switches, everything in between. Keeping those patched and up to date is very, very important. When we when we analyzed several million leaked healthcare records, um, several thousand healthcare uh, data breaches, almost eighty percent of those breaches came from hacked servers, and like ten percent of that, those were compromised via previously released patches that had not been implemented. That, that's a lot of breaches that could have been stopped simply by sufficient patching. So when it comes to the actual remote connection part, there are many, many protocols that you can use, and we're not going to get into them. There's pros and cons to each. There's SSTP, Cisco has versions, there's SSL, VPNs. There's all kinds of VPN technology you can use. The technology used is not the issue. It's really the environment that you're in and how you set them up is the issue. Whatever you choose, if you use an SSL VPN, if you use SSTP, whatever you use, be sure you follow in industry best practices. So look it up and follow those best practices as you implement these technologies, these capabilities. But when your employees go or are ready to connect to those remote networks, be sure that you require secure connections. Don't let them connect to a public Wi-Fi. Force them to use VPN connections when they're outside of the office. That's one way to handle this. And for the record, you should consider your employees' home networks to be hostile. You can't control what's on their home network. You don't know what's happening on their home networks, and you should consider it to be hostile territory. Make sure that they are using WPA or W2 or WPA3. If they are using just flat WPA, that is a easily hackable Wi-Fi protocol and it should be avoided at all costs. Finally, encourage your employees to not use public Wi-Fi unless they are on a VPN. If possible, if they can connect to a mobile hotspot, that's even better than using public Wi-Fi. It mitigates the risk even more, but if they have to use public Wi-Fi at an event, wherever they are, be sure that they use a VPN. And all of this comes down to training. You have to train your staff. If they don't understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, they're not going to do it. So when you're 
requiring them to use secure remote access. Explain to them the risk. Tell them what can happen. Talk about man in the middle attacks and what can actually be done, how their traffic can be spoofed or sent to fake websites if they're not secure. And teach them how to avoid those risks. And I pretty much can guarantee you if your employees understand what they're doing and why they're doing it, they are much, much more likely to follow the security controls that you want them to. Create policies around basic security. Make sure that your employees understand the policies you have in place. Teach them what the policies mean and how to follow them. When there are set rules, your employees know just what to do. When there are no rules, they don't know what to do. And finally, when devices do connect to your network, it's a good idea to check them for quote unquote compliance with whatever security measures you enforce before allowing them onto your network. And we talked about this a little bit when we talked about um, network access control inside of our um, one of our previous lessons. And you can go back and check that out. But when a device is ready to connect, be sure antivirus is up to date. Be sure the device is patched. Then allow it onto your network. And that's a great way to mitigate that risk yet again. If you are looking to train your employees around remote access or any other security topics, we have partnered with Wiser Training to provide you one of the best security awareness training solutions possible. It's very low cost, very effective. All of the videos are less than two minutes long and there's no excuse for your employees. They're broken down so that anyone can understand and you have the gamification, phishing tests to be sure that they are actually learning what you want them to. And finally, when it comes to remote access and securing your network, give your employees the tools they need. So many times security professionals want their employees to make wise choices. They want them to implement secure behavior, but the end users are not given the tools they need to do that. So when you require unique and strong network passwords, give your employees password managers. Choose secure password managers that you can give them so that they can create unique, strong passwords. Give them a VPN for remote connections. That way you don't have employees trying to install TeamViewer on what computer so that they can remote into it or any other remote program, RDP on the web. That's one of the huge vulnerabilities we see. Exposing your remote desktop protocol to the web. If an employee's fished, an attacker can get in and wreak havoc on your network. So give them a VPN, give them the tools they need to do it. Require multi-factor authentication to access high risk areas of your network. If you have sensitive databases stored in the cloud, require multi-factor authentication to access that email, etc. Separate your company Wi-Fi from the guest Wi-Fi. Don't allow non-employees to connect to any part of your network that is not segmented. And finally, have provisions for security in all of your vendor contracts, especially when these vendors are going to be potentially connecting to your remote or connecting remotely to your network. Have provisions in your contracts. In a, in the couple lessons ago when we talked about vendor security, vendor security assessments, and we talked about this a little bit, getting these contracts set up so that you can ensure your vendors are following security standards, but include remote access stipulations in there, how it's gonna be done, et cetera, et cetera. If you implement all of these security controls around secure remote access, you will greatly reduce the risk for your organization to be compromised.